All right, well, this is your Wall Street wake up call. The Bank of England leaving benchmark interest rates unchanged and its 70 billion euro quantitative easing program remains in place. Let's go now to Simon Smith. He's the chief economist at FX Pro based in London. So, Simon, not much of a surprise here given the rate cut that took place last month, although the, B the BOE once again hinted that rates could be cut again in the near term. Yeah, they did. They sort of kept that view from August that, that, that did express the, the scenario that, you know, if, if things panned out the way they expected, then there could well be another rate cut before the end of the year. So that was really where I think the sterling move hinged upon. And so there's, that sentiment was largely kept intact. We did see sterling softer uh, as a result of the statement and the minutes that were released today. Now, when you look at the economic data in the UK, I mean, it's been fine, right? Retail sales in August fell. 0.2 percent, but analysts were expecting a deeper loss. The unemployment rate ha has remained pretty steady since Brexit. I mean, you know, you could almost say what Brexit? Well, when you say Brexit, we haven't we haven't Brexited, if that is actually a verb. We've just voted to um, leave the EU. And whereas Cameron said, you know, if we did that, he would sort of invoke this what's called Article. Uh, 50 on the day after he decided to resign as PM instead, and that hasn't happened. So, you know, the scenario that was envis envisaged, uh, I think, pre uh, the vote has not panned out, and you know, I think it's not really until that uh, exit process is triggered, which at the moment could be the early part of next year, that, um, you know, I think not the economic, not that we're going to see a necessary recession then, but you know, certainly the, I think there'll be a lot more tangible. Uh, implications from the vote and that's what's missing at the moment yes we voted to leave the EU what does that mean by and large we're not sure but but still the BOE obviously felt threatened enough to cut rates last month largely due to brexit fallout or potential fallout they did um, they were very um, vocal but I mean you know they were very sort of clear in the run-up that it would have a negative impact on the economy um, so yes they sort of from some respect have come in for some stick because you know the economy hasn't fallen off a cliff I've said some of the reasons why in terms of um, we haven't actually sort of put the emotions in train yet and also always you know they acknowledge today there's always sort of a bounce back in survey if survey indicators always overreact to the you know into these um, events and we saw that I've seen the bounce back a lot of the survey indicators and probably some of the other indicators such as you know, housing prices are just going to take some time to really settle down and know exactly where the impact is. And what does the BOE's move today mean for the Fed, which holds its meeting next week? Does it increase the chances of Fed inaction next week? Um, I think the implications are pretty marginal. You know, as I say, the bank really didn't shift its view from August to September. They didn't really, they, they acknowledged that there hadn't really been any data that changed their thinking. So I think the Fed can sort of take that on board and, you know, as a sort of, you know, something that hasn't really changed the picture for them. For choice, I've never really seen the Fed moving in the September meeting. I still think the conditions aren't sufficient for them to put up rates given the prevailing risks um, that stem from a sort of relatively mature uh, recovery in the U.S. All right, Simon Smith, we'll leave it there. Simon Smith, the chief economist at FX Pro in London, thank you for joining us. I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.